Kara no Shoju is one of the most disturbing visual novels I've ever played. And this comes from a guy who's played 999, Swan Song, and more. The game is very well crafted, but it has a few glaring flaws that keep it from calling it one of my absolute favorite visual novels. However, it is an amazing title and a must play for anyone interested in murder mystery and visual novels. It's dark, has some interesting characters, and a few surprising moments that will keep you hooked onto this mystery until the last second. Released by Innocent Grey for English speaking audiences in 2011, Kara no Shoju is a murder mystery visual novel. The year is 1956. A series of bizarre murders rocks the city of Tokyo, where young schoolgirls are being gruesomely slaughtered and dismembered. Tokisaka Reiji, an ex cop turned private eye, joins the investigation after the police enlist his help. At the same time, he takes on a missing persons case at a private all girls high school as well as a mysterious request from a girl named Toko to find her true self. As Reiji frantically struggles to crack the case, he learns that the murders bear an uncanny resemblance to a case in which his own fiancé was murdered six years ago. But try as he might, the body count just keeps rising. The murder mystery of Kara no Shoju is the heart of the game, as you play from the perspective of this very experienced detective who tries to solve these terrifying crimes. The plot of this game is very good, for the most part, because it presents a very engaging mystery that will keep you hooked and excited for a pretty long time. It's your basic whodunit at heart, but it carries a lot of subtle, slow moments, big drama, and it's a great read. The major theme of the game is rebirth, carrying on from past tragedy and freeing yourself from the sins and chains of the past. This theme is especially relevant given the game's context of post-World War II Japan still recovering from the atomic bombs. The game presents a symbolically powerful story that will move you, and it feels very mature. Until you get to the hentai scenes at least, but I'll discuss that later. You'll probably enjoy the characters, trying to piece together the mystery, and the game's distinct style, but I focused mostly on how dreary the game was. More specifically, this game has a very graphic story. So this is definitely one for a mature audience because it has disturbing content. This isn't exactly a title you want to pick up for your 7 year old cousin, unless you want him to be permanently mentally scarred. There were some lighter moments, but that was definitely juxtaposed with the overall creeping, foreboding atmosphere. The game was very well paced, aside from some pointless scenes, and it can be finished anywhere from about 10 to 30 hours depending on how fast you read and if you want to see all the endings, etc. In terms of how good of a mystery story this is, my major complaint that it's one of those the mystery is better than the solution type of stories, which are always a little disappointing. The game does mystery so well, there are points where the game shifts the perspective of the murderer committing the gruesome crimes, there are deductions you can make, things you can piece together from subtle pieces of information, the characters can all be considered suspicious, you can never tell what's going to happen next. In that way, Kara no Shoju is a great mystery. But the solution is lackluster for one main reason, there are just way too many coincidences. Without spoiling, by the end of the game, the string of solution has just so many coincidence after coincidence that many things are just connected by ways you'd never even consider. This just felt really inconsistent with the sense of realism the game has created. So this is why the solution was somewhat frustrating to me, because I was able to guess the whodunit, but the way the game ties it all together is too convenient for my liking. However, if you can just accept that this game is fiction and keep an open mind, it probably won't bother you. Also, many people took issue with the game's ending, but all I can say that it was a very fitting ending in my opinion, and it was consistent with the tone and themes of the story. The characters in the game are very good. Our protagonist, Reiji, is a really well-rounded and defined character. I like how you can see his experience at work when he's investigating, his intuition, and you kind of respect him as a badass. However, I also really pitied the guy because the game shows the kind of lonely existence he's living after the death of fiance, and his constant inability to protect those around him despite his best efforts. I enjoyed playing as him and genuinely wanted to see him succeed. There are many other characters in the game, and I don't really have time to go through them all, but I'm happy to report that everyone was memorable and for some reason your sister looks like Mikasa from Attack on Titan. 
that is all. The gameplay here resembles that of Phoenix Wright, at least the investigations from Phoenix Wright. You have to go around, collect evidence, talk to people, visit places, investigate crime scenes, make deductions, and do all the fun stuff that makes you feel like a real detective. I thought this aspect of the game was fantastic, as everything's so well organized, you feel like you're kind of in the game playing as a detective, and it made things a whole lot more interesting and interactive than a regular visual novel. However, this also led to one major flaw, and that's how particular the game is and how your actions are and like what you see, what you do, and what items you pick up. Okay, see, unlike Phoenix Wright, where the game will not let you progress unless you've gotten what you need, Kara no Shouju has many instances where if you don't examine one thing or make one decision right, you'll reach a bad ending. There are so many choices to make and specific places you have to visit at specific times that I say that you have to absolutely use a walkthrough to play this game properly and see it to the end. Otherwise, you'll be at it for a long time and it can get very frustrating even if you are following a walkthrough. This isn't a huge problem because pretty much anyone has access to the internet nowadays and won't be stuck, but I can't help be a little frustrated with how you basically have to use a walkthrough to finish this game. In any case, the gameplay is still loads of fun in the amount of interaction it gives you, although they may have gone a little overboard. I have to address the elephant in the room with this game, and that is, yes, Kara no Shouju does have hentai scenes. A lot of them. And, as you have already guessed, they are completely useless to the plot of this game, except for maybe one that's actually kind of story related. A major plot point of the game is that you're hired to work at an all-girls academy, and as soon as I heard that, I knew that there would be a lot of pointless sexual tension. I won't go into detail, but I wouldn't be surprised if the title, Kara no Soju, translated to, a 30-something year old detective has sex with high school girls and solves murders. It actually translates to Girl of the Shell, but seriously, it was a tiny bit hard to feel bad for the death of our main character's fiance when he grieves by constantly putting his dick in every schoolgirl who comes by. They even show his sister topless with him for some reason, I don't understand. Without a doubt, it's just pointless nudity and sex for the sake of sex. It's disturbing and absolutely unnecessary. The scenes weren't even well done, they just kind of come out of nowhere and no one even mentions it ever again, so it doesn't even do them good. Just skip, just, just skip them. Skip the scenes, because they'll take away from the game's pace, valuable moments of your life you'll never get back, and then it'll make you feel like taking a cold shower and reevaluating your life. The game's graphics are very well done, being very crisp, and the character designs are memorable. The locations are well drawn, and the game really puts you into the world and time period. The game shifts its colors and tones well, and it's just a very appealing title. The music in the game is pretty outstanding too. Although there are only a few pieces that really stand out and stick in your mind, the soundtrack always fitted the mood and it really had this nice jazzy feel to it. It was really well done for a kind of detective murder mystery game. In conclusion, Kara no Shouju is a fantastic title that I want more people to experience, but I do have my big three main problems. The mystery is better than the solution, the necessity of a walkthrough, and the unnecessary hentai. If these three problems were mended, this title would probably be one of my favorite visual novels to date, standing with Ever 17 and 999, but as of now, it just missed the mark. There is a sequel to the game that directly continues the story, but it has yet to be translated as of now, so I can't comment on it yet. I will definitely get around to it though, because Kara no Shouju is definitely a great mystery visual novel that you should check out if you want something dark, adult, and compelling. Thanks for watching.